Hello and welcome everybody, I'm Unproper Varian and this is Crusader Kings 3's number 72 as far as Dev Diaries are concerned. This one is about holding court at court in the royal court in courtly fashion. Alright, good title. Um, I'm interested and I'm excited for this one, not just because of the actual Dev Diary content, but because something that I have talked about a lot in recent weeks and something that you have talked about a lot in the comments as well has actually been addressed in the responses to this Dev Diary. Super excited about that, we're gonna get, we're gonna get into that in a second. I want to inform you that after the dev diary in this video we are going to be covering something that has just come out you know about paradox it is uh, if you've read about it it was about a leaked survey basically held by the unions there and about workplace conditions I would like to cover that because I fundamentally believe that uh, taking a look at the companies that you you know buy things from that you interact with I of course interact with uh, at a much more expanded level than you I would like to have you know genuine dialogue genuine thinking and genuine consideration about that primarily because it is something Something that is easy and cheap for us to do and could mean something for everybody involved so uh, we're gonna go through that I would love to see your thoughts both on the dev diary and that you know report that survey um, and I will give you my thoughts of course on both of those as well they will be separated in the video timeline as always so if you're not interested in one of them then you know you can just skip ahead now let's jump into this one this one is a dev diary written by Wokek also known as Ewan and Ewan is uh, dear to my heart never talked to him actually I, I think I mentioned him once in chat uh, in the the paradox chat but Ewan is dear to my heart because Ewan and Linnea I believe they're both content designers actually wrote a system that I was hugely hugely enamored with when it comes to the Northern Lords uh, game you may have seen it in your games as well in 867 you have a situation where the Dane law forms and where England forms and it essentially creates a long-term intergenerational conflict as these kingdoms can actually, you know, if you snatch up a duchy that was under England as the Dane law, you can immediately integrate it. Basically simulating that the idea of what is England, what is a kingdom, what are the English, what is a people, none of that was really all that clear in, you know, that time period. So I really love that system, although that system was of course not generalized, it was done via decisions and events primarily primarily making it so that we're sort of looking at a situation that is, you know, hey, yeah, they put it in there, but it didn't get its own interface, its own interactions, and so on and so forth. Nonetheless, I am very thankful to Ewan and Linnea there, and whenever Ewan writes a dev diary, I know that there's something in there that I'm interested in, primarily, of course, because, again, that is a system that I would like to see in a much more extended form, and Ewan oftentimes works on that sort of stuff. In today's dev diary, we'll be ta taking a gander at a neat part of the upcoming expansion, Holding Court. Per the usual, I'll preface this by saying that the court scene is a work in progress, the UI of the court scene is a work in progress, and the art generally is work in progress as well. We also have some missing animations and camera perspectives, so take all the images here with a grain of salt. What we can see right here is the Abbasid Court, and somebody pointed out in the comments, look at that, that the onlooker, if you look at the symbol up there, is Christian, making it so and meaning, and it was confirmed in the comments, that you can look at courts of other people if you are, you know, hey, if you click on them and click on their code. So that is pretty cool. I will say, yeah, obviously work in progress. Uh, we're going to see a different throne room later. And the lighting in that is so much smoother, I feel. So much more uh, elegant. But either way, what we can see here, basically, is you can see some of the decorations. You can see the flags, of course. You can see the uh, caliph sitting right there. And then the people that, you know, well, basically are in their code. I assume this is the spy master. This looks like uh, maybe just a guard. It could also be an actual... Uh, uh, you know, the, the marshal, for example, but I'm not entirely certain. I believe we have to look at the poses here for many of them. You can also see a little bug over here where, you know, that, that's an interesting dress style. The guy is like, uh, it, it goes up there. Either way, this is the Abbasid and the Mediterranean court right there. It looks quite nice. Again, the lighting, of course, could be better, but let's move on to more material. When times are, there, uh, are that hard and you really need to just immediately distract yourself from the flaws in your life, it's important to spend some time indulging those with lives even harder than yours, like nearly everyone else. For times when you feel like slumming it amongst the weird and wonderful characters of your realm, you can hold court. And here is where we come to the core of this dev diary. First of all, do you see what I mean when I say that this uh, courtroom is, is much more smoothly lit? It looks really nice. At, at least I feel that way. Uh, this is, I believe, King Ludwig the German of Germany, uh, or well, of East Francia at the time, and you can see right here, this sim symbol clearly means these three are petitioners, so they have come to your court to, you know, have certain issues judged by you and then decided on. And uh, you can also see some of the, you know, stuff generally here that is, of course, in the image. Uh, you can see his wife, you can see him sitting right here, looking fairly annoyed, quite frankly. Uh, there is, of course, also, you can you can see right there, there's some debug uh, stuff going on, there's a low FPS. You and you have to get a better computer, but basically, uh, think that away, and you're looking at a courtroom where I will say, hey, that looks pretty good. It also gives away that since this is clearly the petitioner icon, this icon appears to be 
I'm holding court. Uh, you can see right here, Royal Court of the King uh, of East France here and Court Grander level 5. That is pretty good. I like this scene. I like this scene a lot so far. They have confirmed that there will always be three petitioners that can be altered, both by mods but also by vanilla. Uh, I would like something maybe like 3 to 5, you know, so that it's fairly random. But either way, I I'll be honest with you, you can repeat this decision. You can do this uh, whenever it becomes available basically to you. And at that point, I mean, you're going to see more than three interactions to begin with, right? So let's see what is being said right here. This repeatable decision lets you hear a number of requests from various characters, listening to petitioners seeking your aid and legal ruling on many subjects. They might be guests, courtiers, neighboring rulers, vassal spies, the old uh, art bumbling peasant. Let's take a look at this serious business. A frightful peasant strolls all too close before a guard steps between us. Oh, he backs off with a wink, laughing through scant teeth. Your lordness, I'm come here from Beauvais with a matter of great import. His eyebrows uh, in, uh, undulate. You see, King, the tanner's wife's sow slipped a fence one night, and she, she she only went and got into the old herbalist's veggie patch, his pride and joy. Tears of laughter streamed down the convulsing peasant's face. Okay, he was not talking the way I was talking at all, but I was too focused on the accent. You don't say, please go on. Okay, so there is a follow-up event. They said that as well. If you make a decision here, there can be follow-up events that follow, you know, what you've just decided on. I will say... I understand that this is as large as it is, because if you have an event that is incredibly long, you might need the space, but if it isn't, I feel like something that is maybe a bit smaller might be better. Uh, either way, we have You Don't Say, Please Go On, or Stuart Gow Street, Go, Fix It, Please, You're a Fool, My Fool. I wonder what that means, and what? How did this man get in? Anyone? <laughs> Okay, so the easy choice here is, of course, uh, the, the last one. Let's arrest this guy, maybe, you know, behead him. There, there's gonna be a solution there. At present, you'll receive three such petitions at, at each time, with all events delivered in the new courtly event cell, though follow-up may be character events or similar. So, I assume if you take a decision and then there's an effect, you know, that takes several weeks, maybe several interactions of characters that weren't in the court, then you might afterwards, after you finish holding court, you might get an event, you know, that says, your decision has greatly upset me and I have joined the independence faction. Screw you, right? So, that makes sense. A lost treasure. My lord, I represent the religious community of Noyon. While rummaging through our modest archive, we have come across a very peculiar book. The cover was dusty, the binding fragile, and the pages were yellowed by time, but it contained the most unusual drawings, and the script itself was unknown to us all. We are certain it is a unique in the world, a long-lost vault of knowledge, a true treasure. That's what we offer to you. Perhaps it is the original copy of The Will of God, or its memoir from the world's creation. Thanks, I'll add it to my collection. So that is uh, clearly an artifact right here. Let me have a look at it right now. I assume with a high learning skill, you can maybe even know that language and then study how important it actually is. Uh, I do wonder, if you just add it to your collection, does that mean that it is like a, an item that isn't qualified yet? You know, what, what its actual rating is, like how rare it is? Or is it something that is like, it's gibberish and that automatically puts it into a lower perspective. I'm not sure. Who cares about books, obviously? It's like, get out of my throne room. Oh yeah, these buttons here, by the way, are also debugged. They will not be there when you play the game. Some choices are easy. A child of the court. I'm faced with a Lupold von Pont's sad eyes, which grow larger and more pitiful, as his acquaintance, Wichmann, gently ushers him th uh, towards my throne. King, he laments. The boy has been at Beringar's court with no one to watch over him since the disappearance of his dear papa. Please, look to his future. What can be done with such a child? No fear, I shall raise the boy myself. My hands are full, but I will find him a home. Or oh, unfortunate, but the crown, uh, not the crown's problem. It's the last one. That's the easiest choice I've ever done. Why would I educate some nerd with the name Wichmann? It's the name of like a, a, an 80 year old. Come on now. Some choices are hard. Rightful lands. A markedly disgruntled. Duke Ramnulf hurries to your throne. Liege. My legal rights of the county, lo uh, county of Limousine are well attested. These tracts have long been considered an integral part of my Duchy of Aquitaine. Will you support my claim and have your vassal Duke Bernard relinquish what does not belong to him? The injustice ends now. Such matters are traditionally settled by might. You shall decide this with your sword arms. Bernard's claim is the truer, or I do not interfere in such things. I like this a lot. And... Honestly, why I like this event in particular so much, we're going to address when we get to the dev response. I, I think that is the best choice here. But this obviously is an event. Somebody has a claim on somebody else. And, you know, they say instead of going to war, they say, hey, do you want to just give it to me maybe? Um, nice event as it is, but let's wait for the dev responses. Some are just weird. Laughs requested. In a brief moment of silence, I see Prin uh, Prince Ludwig laughing before realizing that it, it's, it's his turn to speak. Father, he says, giving him some precious time to finalize his thoughts before continuing. Smiles and laughter are a great indicator of a lively court. Thus, I have a suggestion for someone who would make a great jester to entertain us who could come to visit. My liege, if I may, Duke Tankulf uh, speaks up from the sidelines. A jester will ruin the sophisticated air of this court and replace its refinement with crude infantile, uh, infantile humor. 
I shall employ uh, a perfect role for Prince Ludwig. I, if uh, Duke Tankov doesn't like to laugh, we should make him laughable, so you can make either of them to jesters. That is not a peasant's market. A jester is no place in this court, or perhaps I'll look into this some other time. I would probably make Tankov the jester. After you've made your ruling in each case, in addition to the effects of each turn, you gain some court granted to bolster your overall supply. We've got just shy of a hundred or so of these events alone, so there should be a goodly amount of variety for most playstyles. Over a hundred events is significantly more than what we had in CK2 for basically any event questline, any any added event, uh, event questline, I would say at the very least, from memory here. Um, I hope that they do not quickly become repetitive. That is, of course, something that will happen eventually, but I do also think that the way these are constructed, look at this, for example, this is constructed basically around how does your character feel about these two people and how does your character feel about a court jester in uh, general, right? So this is always a decision that you might see again and again and again, but you will always have a different opinion. The drawbacks of the repetitive events in CK2 were primarily that once you've played them, you knew there was an ideal decision there somewhere. You knew that, yep, this is clearly better. Yep, this might get me killed. Yep, this might get my air killed. This is something where, you know, if I play uh, chess with death, which is still, uh, it, it scarred me after I lost uh, one of my Hellenic runs actually on the channel to that event. But anyway, the way I see it in that event, for example, you always know that you go with I want to play with the black colors because that gives you better odds at surviving and the odds already were garbage. In this one, all of the events that we've seen so far, they interact with a different mechanic. This interacts with minor titles. This interacts with uh, the actual dukes. So with your actual vessels, this interacts with uh, raising somebody, this interacts with an artifact, and then this one interacts with, uh, honestly, I don't even know, maybe just a more smaller flavor event, right? But the base idea here is that most of these interact to a significant degree with the actual game, and so 100 is pretty good. I'm looking forward to the mods as well. I already have seen a bunch of modders in my Discord talk about what they would like to do with this, so quite excited for it. This system is something pretty dear to our hearts, as it models a task that would have been a pretty big part of the day-to-day -day for many rulers, and we've put a lot of effort into getting plenty of alter uh, alt alternate events to keep it as varied as possible for as long as possible. We hope you find it a fun and proactive way to explore some of the smaller and uh, not so small issues developing in your realm. This is a really big point to me. This entire system, and I've seen the comments and I at the end of the day think they are valid if you don't care for this system at all, but I basically stand towards the court system and holding court in a very aggressively positive way, primarily because the way we currently interact with characters in Crusader Kings 3 is still incredibly arcadey and distant. If I have somebody that joins a faction, they're unhappy, what I do is I say, I'll make friends with them. And I get the same events that I always get because making friends, you know, hey, there's not that much variety. You go up and you say, do you like this? Well, I like it too. Let's be friends, right? Um, but at the end of the day, it is fairly distant. You never actually, you don't visit them. You don't really do anything in particular. It's just, yeah, here's an event and I know exactly what I need to click because I'm good at this or that. Um, on the other level, there's also, of course, the interaction of, hey, I have a hook on you or, hey, I have a, uh, you know, I can give you money. That sort of stuff. But that is all orientated based on what their opinion is. If I have money that gives them 30 opinion and that will just, you know, whatever their current opinion is, will push them over the threshold of joining any factions, I will give them that money. It's a very arcadey, calculating point of view of looking at this. And I think that is a, a leftover from the more arcadey days of Crusader Kings 1, of Crusader Kings 2 as well. When CK2 released, it was basically pure arcade because of where it came from. It tried so much, but at the end of the day, you can only reach so much, you know, coming from Crusader Kings 1 and uh, not even having, you know, any other religion than Christian implemented into the game as playable. All of that stuff was, of course, more arcadey than this is. And I think this is a massive step into the right direction because for the first time ever, you actually are there and say, I am doing something that a king would genuinely be doing. No king just is like, oh, how many troops do other soldiers have? Oh, I see 8,000, okay, or oh, do other nations have? We can go in, right? That doesn't happen there. There's a war council. There's talking to your allies. There's talking to your vassals, how they feel about it, that sort of stuff. And this is the step into this direction where you actually do something that a king would be doing rather than, okay, let me analyze the numbers. I gotta, gotta run them real quick. Oh, uh, I'm, I'm, you know, that sort of stuff. We need to take that away. In my opinion, at the very least, again, you can very much disagree, and I would love to see your case. Maybe you have a better case than me, but my case basically says this is a super important mechanic because it actually moves us into something that is believable king interaction territory. And with that, 
All of uh, what we have left from the dev theory are a bunch of decisions. Let's just take a look at them because some of them are really interesting. Dress me, dress me. Before the court is underway, my chancellor pulls me aside. To my surprise, he is brandishing a garish scarf. My lord, there will, uh, my lord, there will be so many attending your court. I know you are somewhat challenged in remembering every face and from uh, whence it hails. I propose a solution. We require all at the court to wear dress, which includes local uh, style recognizable to all. He foists a cap at me. For those without clear regional fashions, I have taken the liberty of hiring a tailor who can suggest some new traditional garb for them to wear. See, the thing about this is, I'm certain my guests will wear such raiment proudly, or forget my guests. I hope. And this is definitely, listen, if you have an event like this, you need to have this. I, I very much hope that this actually changes how people look when they appear in your court. Be it a hat in a different color, for example, right? Everybody from Bavaria has a blue hat. Everybody from Saxony has a yellow hat. Everybody from, I don't know, you know, uh, Bohemia wears a, a purple hat, that sort of stuff. I hope it actually does that. A holy tomb. The peasant in front of me seems about the, uh, to explode with excitement. My lord, the miracles, the holiness, we have been blessed. Her enthusiastic ramblings are confessing, but uh, confusing, but I finally get the gist of it. She wants me to sponsor the cu uh, cult of, lo of a local saint who has recently died in Rockenhausen. Anselm was a miracle maker in life, uh, known for living in a barrel after donating all his belongings to the poor and eating garlic without smelling. His tomb is attracting devoted visitors from all over the realm. Now, if you think that this is ridiculous, no, there, there are, yeah... Okay. His holiness will get the veneration he deserves. I shall eradicate this blasphemous nonsense right away. Or oh, I don't care about peasant superstitions. Why is this such a good event? Because saints haven't been a topic in CK3 at all. I made a video ages ago. And I will never... <laughs> I will never stop beating that drum, okay? I made a video ages ago. About how Imperator Rome has a great system when it comes to holy sites. Because the holy sites are founded as basically these sort of attraction locations where people say, yeah, this is dedicated to, in this case, a particular god or a deified person, Imperator Rome, right? And um, these arise naturally, basically. You found it and then people gather around it, the city grows larger, it becomes more important, you store relics in it. CK2 and CK3, their holy sites are really bad in comparison. Now, what they confirmed is that saints are not coming with this update. But what I will say is quite simple. This event screams that the writer of the event fundamentally understands why people went to certain pilgrimage sites. Obviously, there was an economic interest in there as well. I don't want to, you know, keep that away. There were many, many interests to do something like this. But one day, this event, you know, you click something, might found a new minor holy site that is important to a part of your realm and could be influenced, you know, whether somebody uh, pillages it and so on and so forth. That's why I would like to keep an eye on this event. Again, if we go through the events that we've gone through so far, most of them interact with a mechanic outside of the court somewhere. They do something. They make people like or dislike you. They change their position in life and whatnot, right? This could be one of those as well. Right now it's just flavor. That has been confirmed. My heralds announce the arrival of a, ne a neighboring petty ruler, High Chieftain Kotschel of Balaton. He enters your hall with dignity and bows deeply. Your grace, I have come to humbly pledge my realm to you if you would accept my terms. I will serve you as a faithful vassal lord of East Francia in exchange for your protection. May our two great houses both prosper from uh, by the arrangement. I accept High, Chief Co High, High Chieftain Kotschel. I think these terms are a bit one-sided, or I think not. This could be a bit of a negotiation right here, right? Uh, I think not is just, you know, hey... Mm, I accept. That's what it says. This is good. This is really good. We're gonna see. I want to address this as well once we get to the dev responses. Land grants. An envoy from a provincial city, Mayor Bernd of Hofgeismar, has come to pr uh, protest the abuse this city has been suffering at the hand of its neighbor, suffragan Bishop Berthold, under the protection of their liege, Count Cobo of Kassel. They occupy and re uh, repossess our arable land by force and threaten the landowners with spiritual damnation and material violence to make them sell their belongings. I beg of you, my lord, do us justice. Berthold is as well within his right. Ber Berthold is not above the law. Bernd, you can serve me better. And don't bother me with these local scholars. You could even recruit somebody here as a, you know, a council member, for example. Uh, this one, I'm split about. I don't think this one is that important primarily because we are looking at an interaction between barons. And barons basically play no role whatsoever in CK3 right now. Something that should be altered, I'll tell you outright. But yeah, basically no roles whatsoever right now. Now this was Ewan's dev diary here. Let's jump to the dev responses. I marked some stuff here as well. I asked something actually in this uh, in this in this thread. Hey Ewan, thank you for your work. I'm a big fan of the highly character driven gameplay that is the focus of this system. Have you and the team considered enabling this system from the other direction as well? I'm mostly thinking of, for example, a player having something that resembles the events above and choosing to bring it to their leash. So the player petitions something. I may have a claim that instead of pushing in a bloody war, I want acknowledged and pushed through by the king. Uh, multiple people, of course, this is a big topic, ask this as well. Watch this space. Implying there will be news, and you will like the news. 
what this basically confirms is uh, it, it takes the wind out of the sails of my biggest concern for this entire expansion. So far this expansion, since it is limited to kings and emperors, I always lamented this, I always said it uh, makes it difficult because it makes it so that you really need and you want to get up to these ranks so that you get an additional interaction form. Uh, that's kind of boring, right? Now it appears the player will have an active role in giving petitions to their liege as well, which, oh my god, it could, up, it, it could open up so many things. You could swear... Uh, allegiance in different ways. You could, for example, arrange marriages maybe by going to their court, by doing something there, by interacting with them, by pleading with them, right? You could have your children educated there. All of these things that currently are these distant. I'm gonna right click right here and then character, yep, let's just, I'm gonna give you these people and you have a plus four there, right? All of that stuff where you, where you for example, give them a ward like I just described, right? These things that are so distant, they do a thing that happened in real life, but they do it in a way where it is very much removed from the actual physical interaction of the people talking, that stuff could all of a sudden be moving into a courtroom and all of a sudden be much more alive, much more interwoven with the actual dynamics of the characters. I love it. You could also, again, yeah, you could uh, basically push your claim. You could maybe ask them to start a war in your name. You could say, hey, you know, I have a claim on the Kingdom of Poland, dear Holy Roman Emperor, uh, Emperor, would you like to push it, right? I think all that sort of stuff would be absolutely neat. Uh, how big this sort of, what you know, this, this sort of integration currently will be, I don't know. But the potential of the player sending a petition to the liege is massive. Can we, uh, can a king view other kings' court? Yep, that has been confirmed. Nice to have already. The events will be interlinked with the lifestyle mechanics, or are they mostly independent? Independent from lifestyles at the moment, I'm afraid. I wish that weren't so, but I'll be honest with you, they are already very much interconnected with other mechanics. I think the cherry on top would certainly be if you have a certain lifestyle, then people will come with certain issues. But of course, the issues of the realm aren't necessarily directly related, right, to uh, who you are. You know, if, if I focus on stewardship, Still, my vessels might go to war, and that's a that's a warfare question, right? That sort of stuff. Uh, I still think that a further integration, both for the petitioner and the liege, when it comes to the lifestyles, would be great. Uh, a few of these seem to be reactions to things that you can do as a player, like swear fealty. Will things like swearing fealty uh, work normally on uh, on the player end, or will the player somehow have to interact with the AI's code? The swear fealty off a of vassalage, obviously, it still works normal. This is just a specific event that might fire when holding court if there's some uh, someone valid for the event. I'm just saying, if you expand it, I wouldn't I wouldn't be sad about it. One of the events mentions a saint. Right here, it is confirmed that this is currently just a local saint. But may I just highlight for the moment, one day, one day. I love to see my character depicted in a court scene where I'm the steward. Yep, that will sometimes be the case. It depends on your character and their circumstances. Any idea what are these three buttons? So the three buttons, uh, if I scroll up here, it's these buttons, right? So we know this is holding court. I'm, I'm settling on the fact that that is holding court because these have the same symbol. Uh, but the question is basically, what are they? I know what they are, but I will not tell you. Thank you, you and you, son of a gun. <laughs> um... Right, they didn't convert any court events that already exist into this, but they might do that in the future. I think that is fairly trivial. I think it is still okay to get normal events that, you know, might also be in a court. But yeah, I, uh, you know, obviously they have over 100 as it is right now. Uh, the rest wasn't that interesting. And I think with that, we will be moving on. So this was, uh, ju just to sum it up again, this was the dev diary. My biggest concern, my biggest complaint so far, as far as, you know, the court system being top down rather than down to the top, uh, has been alleviated. I hope that the system is fairly wide reaching. I hope that much can be integrated, even if it isn't once Royal Court hits. If you can integrate the more the merrier. That is where I am basically coming from. Now let's talk about this. This is uh, the Twitter account of Magnus Geran, which is probably mispronounced. And Magna is a union representative at Paradox, the one quote in the article that we're going to take a look at in a second. I consider this article to be the best and most measured ta uh, English take on our survey. It takes into account the limitations inherent in our survey while still highlighting a need for further action. What I want to talk about now is how I feel as a content creator and a consumer about this survey and what has come out and what is about to happen and what my stances on it are, not because I want you to share my stances, but because I want you to think about it. I think... One of the things that drive me in my adult life on a primary level is the question of responsibility 
and being aware of things. Sometimes you have to be very proactive to be aware of things, and sometimes you have to be very proactive to be responsible. Sometimes it's easy, sometimes it's harder, sometimes you can't avoid it, sometimes you can avoid it, sometimes you don't want to, sometimes you want to. I want to make that clear, okay? That is where I am coming from. I think that is vital to discussing it, that is vital for a healthy community that looks at Paradox as a company, but also as the employees within that company. And I would like to see your thoughts after I've given you mine, right, uh, on this entire topic. and. So this is the article, this is the article that uh, Magnus, so one of the representatives of the unions in Paradox Interactive, and I do want to say the unions in Paradox are, and in Sweden are very, very important because Sweden does not have a minimum wage. Sweden works a lot with union arrangements and with union organizations of the workers. They are uh, much heavier, into this, I mean, than the US, of course, but that's not difficult, but also much more heavily than Germany, for example, which has a very strong union culture because it is embedded in the co uh, constitution. So... Uh, the the unions are very important here and this is the article where the union representative basically said this is the most well measured the most uh, adequate article on this entire topic union survey alleges culture of mistreatment at paradox interactive respondents claim to have experienced bullying and gender discrimination let's take a look at what we know so far and then i would like to discuss it from my point of view how i feel about it and you know hey i would love to see your opinion on it of course uh, what i fundamentally want to mention is i i in my core do also believe that as a consumer, you should have to be informed. You should go and inform yourself. It is your adult or non-adult, depending on your age, of course, responsibility to say, I want to be in the know so that I can make informed decisions. Blissful ignorance can feel nice, but in reality, it doesn't do so much for you or for anybody else. So, of the 133 Paradox employees who responded to the survey, 44% claim to have experienced mistreatment from bullying to gender discrimination. So it is a very wide range. Um, I understand that Paradox has about 400 employees in Sweden, so 133 Paradox employees from those 400 answered the survey, and 44%, so almost half of the people that answered, uh, said that they did experience something like this. The survey was conducted last month by Unionen and Sarko, the two main unions at Paradox Interactive concerning the working conditions in the Swedish part of the business. The results claim that 69% of women and 33% of all respondents had experienced mistreatment during their time at the company. So we're talking about 69% of women that were surveyed here that have ex uh, exper that have experienced mistreatment that can range from bullying to gender discrimination. It's not very clarified because again it was an informal survey, uh, and in total, so uh, everybody that has responded, 33%. It further claims that mistreatment is a systemic and far too common issue at Paradox and that high-level perpetrators are perceived as shielded by the company, creating a culture of silence. It's worth noting that this wasn't a huge legal investigation into the company's culture, but something organized by union reps. A representative of Unionen and Sarko, so that is Magna that we saw earlier in the tweet, told us over email that the survey was only sent to union members and Paradox staff in their union Slack channel. It's also difficult to pinpoint when the alleged mistreatment took place because the survey was about staff members' general time at Paradox. Uh, let's keep that in mind. The union rep informed us that while it hasn't been uh, in announced internally, Paradox are planning a third-party audit of some sort, which they had specifically suggested to HR when the, uh, they presented them with the results. So basically, the unions did the survey and then presented the results to HR and said, we need a thorough, truly universal, you know, investigation survey into this topic. And that is now what Paradox is about to do. As union members, we believe this to be a good idea as long as we are involved in the process, they told us. We believe our involvement is necessary to ensure our members can trust the results, the interpretation of the results, and the choice of questions. The management team, so this comes from a Paradox spoke, a spokesperson, I believe it was mentioned somewhere else that it was uh, Loic, uh, you, you may know him, you may not know him, not that uh, vital here. The management team has been working to reconcile the informal survey with our own internal research, and are eager to take action. Paradox is now in the process of bringing in an external neutral firm to conduct a thorough audit of our processes and a comprehensive employee survey. This will help us advance our efforts towards all of the subjects that we've worked to improve in recent years. Harassment and abuse will be paramount among these. But we'll also be examining uh, subjects like unbiased hiring and compensation, ongoing bias awareness, inclusion and more they added. So, this is the state. Let me summarize it really quickly. We have a very high uh, incident rate of uh, mistreatment report that comes from a survey held by the union representatives. It was presented to HR and then HR said, you know, okay, your idea, unions here, that we should sit down, have an external firm come in and do an actual thorough audit um, will be done. What is this situation? How do I feel about what, what I think about it, rather? Um, fundamentally, I would like to make one point that I think does this entire topic so workplaces in general, I think, a bit of a, you know, uh, injustice. I, I think it, it really does it too easily. It, it approaches it from, an, uh, from a situation that is far too easy. The general idea that I've seen, a sentiment that I've seen is, oh, it's the gaming industry. 
You know, that's just how it is. I fundamentally do not believe that this or the topic of Activision Blizzard, and I want to make clear, I think Activision Blizzard is, uh, you know, if this is here, yeah, Activision Blizzard is somewhere up there. That, that, is, uh, that is an entirely different topic, but let's not dwell on that. Where I'm coming from is that this is not a games industry issue. If you've worked in workplaces, um, and this doesn't need to happen to you, and I hope it didn't. Um, I certainly saw the good and the bad side. I saw many different sides. Uh, you know, even in one business, you, you can see a, a lot of that, I think. But basically, the way I perceive it, and uh, I, I believe that the data suggests it as well, is that workplace organization, workplace treatment, harassment, abuse, fairness, I mean, it starts with the pay, right? Um, I believe that those are general topics. Any business of a certain size, actually of any size really, can be like that. Many sectors that are not gaming are like this, right? That, that is my first thing that I would like from my point of view to make clear. This is a, a fundamental assumption that I have, that we're looking at a situation that is not just the gaming industry, that is industries in general. Um, what I also would like to add is, again, I already said it, that I don't think this is comparable to Activision Blizzard. I think if it was somebody like Magne, and Magne, if you've ever heard of him, you will know that he takes uh, that, that topic, you know, workers' rights and uh, uh, a good workplace environment incredibly seriously. Um, if it was like Activision Blizzard, which is a truly, again, if, if you are informed about that case and you will know what I'm talking about, a truly uh, abhorrent situation. If it was like that, I believe we would know about it more drastically than the union rep saying we are working with the company to find a solution to make things work, right? Uh, those are, are two core assumptions that I have personally that I want to make clear so that you can see my point of view. Now, when it comes to the case of Paradox, what I simply want to say is that if you are a company that 10 years ago, 20, 2011, didn't have Crusader Kings 2, didn't have EU4, didn't have Hearts of Iron 4, only had niche games, hadn't published anything big yet, you know, City Skylands, still way out there. Ten years ago, you were a tiny company. Well, fairly big compared to where you started, right? But you were a tiny company. And then within ten years, you come to a situation now where you are a multinational, huge publisher, huge production site, stock listed, and so on and so forth. That is a huge shift in the scale and the scope that the company and its managerial tasks have. I believe that when you have an organizational structure, whether it's a business or whether it's any other organization really, whether it's, you know, just, I don't know, a charity for example, when you have something that increases on this scale, I believe that it is very easy that these mistreatments can happen. Why do I point that out? Why do I say it? I don't say it to say, oh, it's okay, it just happens. It's not okay, period. But I point it out because what matters to me going forward is that this culture that makes people say I feel as though I was mistreated is not something that the company management staff and so on and so forth, you know, the people that are making decisions basically want. If they do not want that, this situation can be recovered. The unions already say we're working with them, we're getting a third party neutral firm, we're going to reevaluate all of this and then we hope to come to a conclusion where we as unions, as employees are involved and can find a solution that creates a better work environment for everybody, right? I, I, in my core, that is why I bring up all the other earlier assumptions that I made. I believe that this is key to how I personally evaluate the situation. I am very picky, I am very uh, stubborn and I'm very principled and should this follow the path that the unions have suggested here and should the unions in a year come back to us and say things are without a doubt better now, per perfectly acceptable. I don't think right now going this is the worst company that has ever existed or this is the best company and everybody's lying. I don't think any of those perspectives are reasonable and I urge you not to hold them. I urge you to rethink it. But I urge you to be on your guard or to have your guard up and look out for a company whose employees are creating games that you love. Okay, that is basically my, my plead here. Let's take a measured, a principled approach and let's see where it goes. Um, I also uh, basically just want to address that, that issue. I mean, whether you, you know, 
view it as principle to say I don't purchase for them. Obviously, sometimes you have principles and you completely disregard them because you still buy items from, you know, I don't know, from literal slave work or whatever. I don't want to get into the philosophical side of it. Practically speaking, I believe it can be very hard or impossible to do the right thing. Sometimes, and sometimes it can be very easy. I would ask you simply to decide for yourself, is this easy, is this something, even if it is hard, that you still want to do, but at the same time, to take a principled uh, approach, I personally uh, have met and talked to a number of Paradox employees in various positions and in, in various on various levels, and I never, and again, this can be wrong judgments, I'm not saying this is the absolute judgment, this is also just an anecdote, I do want to point all these things out, you know, but again, I'm giving you my take. I have never encountered them as people that made me think if I worked there, I think I could be, this could be god awful. And what I mean to say there is, I don't mean to say these people that reported this in the survey did not experience mistreatment. That is not what I mean to say there, but what I mean to say there is that there are many good people in that company that clearly want to work this out, that clearly want to create a better state for the employees and for the company as a whole. That is why personally I currently, uh, I, I want to discuss it with you, uh, but as for my opinion, basically again, and it was a very long case, I'll admit that, <laughs> very long case that I made here, I have taken the position that I will be following this closely, I hope you will be too, and I personally have decided that I will withhold the exact, you know, hey, what is the consequence of this, what does it mean, is this company, what, what are they, right, I will uh, hold that back until we see the results of this now upcoming shift. I think that was immediately the right move, both from the union and the company to say, we can work it out if they have that perspective and we will do it by immediately taking action. Um, but at the end, what matters is that people work for their money and do their work and do not have to endure mistreatment. And that means we have to wait for the results. Again, this is my point of view. I would like to see yours in the comments. Um, I Even if you hold one again that I uh, very explicitly uh, criticized in this video, I think it is important that we think and that we talk about this because we are directly interwoven in who we deal with, both on a personal but also on a transactional and on, on a financial level. Basically, I hope that, you know, maybe uh, you, you disagree, maybe you agree. I hope that at the very least we can think together about this, we can talk about this and we can come to uh, conclusions that are again considered fairly well without prejudgment or well prejudice you know in one or the other direction let me know what you think um i will link this article in the description i will read every comment of course i would be very interested again uh, I, I i've taken a stance and i i've made it i think clear if you agree then let me know if you disagree then let me know this is a uh, honestly I, I can't describe it I, you you know I, I love to talk like a lot about topics to so really go into in depth but when it comes to why this is so important to me it's just fundamentally it's, it's just absolutely vital for me that on this channel we talk about this sort of stuff but we talk about it in a considered and thought out way I think that is very important to me how I understand this channel which is why I'm so passionate about it right now so let me know what you think um yeah uh I think that's it. All right, yeah. Uh, the dev diary was great. The report, not so great. Let's hope that the result will be significantly better. Again, I'm following Magna and the union's lead there when it comes to that, because of course that is primarily what matters when it comes to work, uh, work environments. How are the actual people feeling? And with that being said, thank you for supporting the channel. Barons, Counts, Dukes, love you. And I'll see you later, alligator.